Welcome to the Victory Podcast. I'm your host, Monique Watson. On this episode, I sat down with Kia Binion again. We talked a bit about um, some holiday treats. We talked about what she made for Thanksgiving, how she spent her Thanksgiving, and uh, lots of good material and even some products from the pastry engineer that are coming down the pike. I hope you enjoy it. So welcome to the Victory Podcast. I'm your host, Monique Watson. This is our special Thanksgiving episode. Thanks for joining. So today I have uh, a friend of the pod, friend of friend of my friend, friend of my sister, friend friend in general, uh, our lovely Kia Binion. How are you doing, Kia? Hey, Monique. Um, it's good to be back. Uh, thank you for, for welcoming me back. We're so glad to have you back. <laughs> and full transparency, you know. The holidays, life, works, been crazy busy for your favorite podcast host. And so I've been like, oh man, I really need to get November Thanksgiving episode. And I was like, saw something on social media and we'll get into it later in this episode. I was like, Kia, do you want to be on the podcast to talk about that? And she was very uh, gracious with her time during this holiday season. And so I thank you for joining us back. So maybe a, a quick intro for folks who, and I'll link in the episode, the previous episode that Kia was on, as well as a little bit about her from her website, but maybe just a quick 30 second, who you are, how we know each other. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Kia Binion. I am the founder and owner of The Pastry Engineer, which is a comprehensive culinary science platform. Uh, we do everything culinary and science, whether that's uh, teaching workshops and classes, virtual workshops and um, uh, offerings between the ages of uh, middle school to high school kid programming, as well as uh, corporate team building events. Um, We also do recipe development um, and consulting services for clients. Um, and we are newly getting into the product space. Um, so just kind of a, a broad spectrum of all things food and culinary. My background is in civil engineering. I went to Georgia Tech for uh, civil engineering, which is actually where I met uh, Nicole, who is Monique's younger sister. She is one of my best friends. And that's how I got connected with Monique. So that's just, you know, the full circle story of why I'm here speaking with you guys today. And I'm just excited to have my second go around at this. Absolutely. And the second time now, we officially call you a friend of the pod. So you are, you're locked in as a friend of the pod. Love that. All the things. So whenever you've got, you know, new stuff coming, you know, think of, think about the victory podcast, you know, come, come on. We love to have you always, always our virtual door is open. So today is Black Friday. Uh, Kia, neither Kia or I are being trampled at your favorite retailer. So uh, Kia, tell us a bit about how was your Thanksgiving? You know, what'd you get into? What'd you eat? What'd you make? All the things. Yeah, yeah. So um, admittingly, Thanksgiving this year looked a little different for me. Um, that, which I'm sure a lot of people kind of experienced this year or last year. Um, I've been a bit under the weather for the past couple of days. It's not COVID, um, um, it, you know, just, just, a, just a cold, but I took the decision to not be around um, my large family gathering um, just because my grandparents are elderly and didn't want to put them in a position where they could potentially um, get sick. So um, did a few dishes for the family, um, just what I was responsible for. And my mom so graciously uh, carted them over to the larger celebration. So I did get to see my parents um, and then um, kind of did a, a much smaller gathering with one of my best friends and her mom. Um, just so that I wasn't completely by myself um, on Thanksgiving. But I, you know, I opted out of the larger gathering. I think kind of one of the silver linings of the pandemic is a heightened awareness of the fact that being sick is a legitimate excuse to stay home, you know, and I, 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 I'm glad that I'm more aware of my personal health and also how it impacts other people. Um, but just also prioritizing taking care of myself and, and taking that time off. And, you know, thankfully, I am 
off for these next few days and stuff. And so I'm able to just kind of rest and drink tea and, and binge watch Netflix shows and, <laughs> you know, just kind of get myself back in, in, in fighting shape. So. Absolutely. I think that's so important. And, um, you know, you know, my backgrounds in public health. So it's interesting to me, uh, many things that I guess as a kind of public health safety professional that I realized in the pandemic that weren't just givens, like real discussions that we've been having or things that have been brought to people's consciousness about how to properly wash your hands. Hand washing has been you know, around as a thought process for at least a hundred years. Um, but I had adult scientists, smart people really having to have conversations about and send out even a video to the site. Like, this is how you properly wash your hands. Yeah. Um, Cause a lot of people just run water, hit the soap and the water all at the same time. Like one of these and visually I'm just swa- slashing <laughs> hands around, bam, bam, 10 seconds. If my, if that, and I'm out. That's better than nothing, but right. but it doesn't solve but, the problem. Right. No, exactly. I had a discussion with someone about like the automatic hand washers and the water wasn't staying on quote long enough for them to wash their hands properly. And that led me to okay, so I think we're doing this wrong if that's your case because you wet your hands, have the soap, get the scrub going, you know, happy birthday to yourself twice, you know, or whatever song you want to sing that's short of that length of time for 20 seconds, scrubbing undersides, under things, all the things, all the crevices, every surface of your hands. And then all that is without water flowing over them. And then rinse that off, dry your hands, done. But it was one of those things I was like, does not know everyone not washing their hands this way or washing them at all? Uh, So it's just interesting. And I think you bring up a great point too, especially about being sick. It's a big, big, big pet peeve of mine where you have, so now if you've got allergies, that's, you know, sick-like symptoms, but you know, it's pollen, it's, you know, mold, it's ragweed, that's different. But if you come and you're like, oh, I think I just got a little cold. I'm like, I'm going to ask, I can't send you home because you don't report to me, but I really want you to think about going home because you're going to take down a lot of people, especially if you work in, you know, some of our areas or process areas, their desks are sort of closer, even post-pandemic, um, even pre-pandemic rather. Um, but it's just like you getting other people sick, you don't know what their their kind of risk profile at home is. Do they care for an elderly person? Do they have small children? Do they themselves have some immunocompromised situation that they're working through? And you bringing what is a seemingly simple cold uh, could be the difference between, you know, regular day and and even to stay at the hospital or or worse. So it's just, I really, I thank you uh, from across the country uh, (laughs) for your decision because, you know, we love our family. We love to spend time with them. Absolutely. And we want to continue to be able to spend time with them. So, you know, making, making small sacrifices um, for, for the greater good, which, you know, I can launch into an entire (laughs) lecture about that. so to all of those, I'll link the, the COVID-19 vaccine episodes, Perfect. miniseries. Perfect, um, yes. <laughs> make your decisions. Uh, the research stands is the peer-reviewed research stands. Um, I won't get into that because I could go for 45 minutes about, Same. and I have in those episodes. So link in the show notes if you're if you're curious more from some, you know, public health and medical health professionals um, about the COVID, about the vaccine, things like that. Um, so link that in the episodes below. So. You did make some recipes. Let's talk about it. Hit, hit them with the Wendy Williams. Uh, how you doing? How you doing? So what did, what did you make? What would you make? We're going into, you know, finish Thanksgiving. People are maybe starting to think about, okay, I like that recipe. I'm thinking about doing something different for the Christmas, New Year, holiday sort of situation. What's some tips, rec- recommendations? What are some of your go-to dishes? Any cocktails? Because he is the pastry engineer, but she's also the cocktail engineer. Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. So I would say typically flavor profiles for me um, in kind of the Thanksgiving spirit are more along the lines of apple and sweet potato and pumpkin etc you know very 
spice forward. Um, so you think your cinnamon, your nutmegs, et cetera. So, you know, I've done everything from sweet potato cheesecakes to, um, you know, apple spice cakes to, um, you know, various cobblers, peach cobbler, apple cobbler, blueberry cobbler, et cetera. Um, so definitely kind of focusing on some of those flavor profiles in Thanksgiving because it's still the fall um, and just kind of playing off of that autumn color tone. And then you think of like some elements of warmth, um, the, the orange, brown, reddish hues that you kind of get in autumn. So I'm a, I'm a very visual, um, I guess, eater as well as chef. Um, I like mm -hmm. for things to kind of match from a, from a visual perspective because I'm a firm believer that when you consume foods, it's an experience. So it's a visual experience. It's a, um, a, a taste experience, a smell experience. And so you're just trying to play off of all of those. Um, and then transitioning into the Christmas holiday, um, I start to get into still keeping with some of those spice notes because I think um, spices are really important. But then for winter, uh, in addition to say your cinnamon, you may also add in allspice or clove or star anise. Um, and then you also have kind of a little bit more of a range to play around with mint. Um, so like a peppermint, uh, peppermint bark. I've done, um, it's funny, I am not a fan of chocolate and mint typically. Like I'm not a peppermint patty. I'm not a thin mint person. My friend, my I, friend. But there People is- People me crazy, but I'm like- yeah. Yeah, I do, I, it's I not bad. It's, it's just it, not it, for it, me. It, what is it? Mint chocolate chip ice cream? No, please keep it. it just, no, I I don't hate hate it. Like if it was like I wouldn't like you know starve if that was the only thing. But like uh, between the two things that I get hacked for is the mint chocolate flavor combination, and then people really big into the pumpkin spice. I, okay, yeah, it's it's overrated. Pumpkin spice is not bad. It's just. <laughs> A hype around it, like, oh my god, these pumpkin spice season, Starbucks is about to come out, but people's brains are exploding. I'm like, yeah, yeah. It, it tastes not bad, but y'all act like it's like the best thing since sliced bread. It'll like, people yeah. fall, people in line, like, oh, the pumpkin spice coming out. Oh my god, they got pumpkin spice cheesecake and pumpkin spice coffee and pumpkin spice water. I don't know. I was like, I mean, it's okay. I'm not hating on the pumpkin spice, <laughs> but. And I would, I, I think my my that the sweet potato is superior to pumpkin because sweet yes. potato has its own flavor profile. It adds something to the dish. I think pumpkin is a good carrier for all of those spices, but you could essentially transfer that same spice group into sweet potato and then have a more complex dish, which is kind of what I lean towards. So kind of getting back to the mint and chocolate, the one exception I make to that rule is peppermint bark. Um, so peppermint bark is, a, I think it's a Ghirardelli candy where it's dark chocolate layered with white chocolate topped with actual peppermint. So not mm -mm. the artificial peppermint extract or mint extract that you'll find in some things, but it's actual peppermint. That is the one time that I will enjoy that. So I've actually done some desserts that are a play off of it. So like a dark chocolate cake layered with a white chocolate ganache and then topped with just crumbled peppermint um, pieces. So you get a little bit of that mint flavor, um, but I think peppermint is sweeter and less, um, sometimes less offensive than that mint extract that I think is used in kind of like the mint chocolate chip. Um, but also for, you know, holidays, I love a good classic Southern dessert. So like a red velvet cake, pound cake, you know, I mentioned peach cobbler earlier. And so like kind of those down home Southern um, full flavor, um, lots of butter <laughs> types of desserts. I kind mm -hmm. of you know, before starting the pastry engineer, I ran a dessert catering company, Soko Sweets, uh, for a few years that I actually started when I was in college at Georgia Tech. And so uh, I describe my baking style as Southern contemporary. So like, it's very much rooted in 
those traditional Southern flavors that you find when you go back to say Georgia or, you know, during the great migration, a lot of people ended up in Chicago, which is where I'm from. And um, so you just kind of get like that wholeness of flavor and it just, it makes it feel like family and togetherness and, mm-hmm. and community, um, which is always what I strive for, especially when, you know, you're doing desserts for the holidays. Absolutely. That aligns. I'm glad we agree on the mint and the chocolate. And yeah, I feel like we're area. in the minority. We, we, uh, we, stand, people, we stand strong. For their mint and chocolate. And I'm like, like I'm, how I'm could not you alive. not? Why don't you love it? I don't understand. It's so good. I'm like, I think it's the, I think it's to your point, it's the mint extract. Cause yeah, I love a peppermint bark. I love white chocolate and the peppermint kind of dynamic. Love add that little bit of dark chocolate. I'm not usually a dark chocolate fan, but all of it sort of sits together because the white chocolate carries the dark chocolate with the yeah, level of sweetness great. that I require. And then the actual pepper, like I like peppermints. I like chocolate. I like both of them separately, but, and I like peppermint, chocolate, white chocolate, Ghirardelli, peppermint bark. Mm-hmm. But the mint, cook, people are like, ooh, mint cook like Girl Scout cookies. Mint on the no. thin mints are everything. I'm like, you know, the tagalongs and the Samoas are everything same, for me. The ch- same. Okay, so we like some sister of the Sister Soldier, Samoa. Sister Soldier friend. Yes. <laughs> Yes. I love a good Samoa. <laughs> I love a Samoa and I love the tag on because I'm a chocolate peanut butter person. And okay. they kind of have that shortbread cookie, the peanut butter, and I think maybe some caramel, and then it's covered in chocolate. And then if you put those in the freezer, that chocolate, it doesn't get too good because the chocolate will melt on your hands if you kind of have them at room temperature or hot. But if you, you put them in the freezer and you take them out, I'm like, it's just got that crunch of the cookie the chocolate, the peanut butter. It's just like kind of like a Reese's, but not the same flavor profile, but just, just everything. Delicious. Okay. So if there are any parents of Girl Scouts listening out there, please send your information to Monique. So that send your, Monique at the victory podcast.com order from you all, because I'm thinking when is the last time I've even had a Girl Scout cookie. Mm-hmm. So would love to support mm-hmm. y'all when the season. We love to support the organization. You guys start selling again. I used to be a Girl Scout. I remember that. So <laughs> Life, lifetime Girl Scout. I still have somewhere is my lifetime Girl Scout card. I have lifetime membership. It was Girl Scout from third grade till I graduated from high school. So we support you and our stomachs do too. Um, yes, those are all the things. I, my go-to, so I don't, so I like to cook, but I don't like to cook like during the week. So like for special occasion stuff where you're not like rushed for time or tired and everything. So my my dishes this year, I made, um, as far as more pastry kind of sweeter things, I made a carrot souffle. Um, oh, okay. I don't know if you've ever had that. I have not, but that sounds, that sounds really good. It is all the indulgent things in which you would, it's a, first off, let's talk about, it's a Paula Deen recipe. So you already know. Oh, we're yes. in the deep so butter. It for like three pounds of butter. Um. Yeah, not quite, but it's like, uh, it's like three whole big sticks of butter. Okay. Uh, three sticks of butter, three pounds of carrots, some flour, cinnamon, I think a little bit of sugar. I think like maybe like half a cup of sugar, um, butter. and then you mix all that. So I have a really good shout out to Vitamix. Um, if you want to sponsor this podcast, hit me up. Um, but we just bought a, a Vitamix and it changes the game um, because it's just the, it's the Rolls Royce of blender food processors. Cause it really can, it's got like way more horsepower. What I figured out, and this is my like nerdy side is that blenders have like 0.8 horsepowers on their engine like um for their motor for their for their thing the vitamix which has been around for like 100 years has like two horsepower so you're getting double the amount of powers and then they're just well constructed and their new round of vitamix actually has a self-cleaning thing and it's dishwasher safe so it makes it really easy to clean yeah so if you're gonna like last forever too they last like forever like people have them for decades i don't see this it, I don't see any wear and tear. We've been using it regularly. We make smoothies. I made nut butter. Um, all, I made my, like my own almond butter the other year. But yeah, so carrot souffle is what I made this year. And then I usually, I didn't do it this year, but I usually like to make an apple harvest cake. 
found a recipe online. So it's like a, it's a pound cake. Um, it's got apples, wa apple walnut harvest cake. It's got apples and walnuts. Um, sorry, it's a bundt cake. So it's in a bundt cake. Apples and walnuts kind of in the mixture. And then it do, I do a caramel, it has a caramel glaze that goes over top. It's really, and to your point, a spice board, warm, appley. Pies is not my gifting. I have not tried. I'm just a little hesitant. My pie game is buy the pie crust and put the things in if I do make one. I have, like a, the, I have a pie crust yeah. recipe I can share with you um, that has been my tried and true for probably like the past 10 years. I use it okay. when I make cobblers. I use it when I make pies. Okay. We don't speak. Yeah. Yeah. We got to speak about <laughs> it. I was telling my husband, I was like, I want to try and make a pie, but we watch British Bake Off and I go, soggy bottoms I just I'm afraid I, my, my my food is like I I don't like to make food for other people unless it's I feel like it's excellent like trying out new recipes for the holiday is like ah that's risky you no know, yeah that, that's I just a think gamble I don't I feel I'm, a, I'm like the holiday major gatherings is a is like a stage of performance like you need to bring your oh, a game like you like, do your home you do a couple of rehearsals, tweak exactly. the recipe, get this out there and be like, this, this is, is this is yeah. this is this is it. This is playoff season. Here we go. Well, here we go. We got playoff, playoff level. We've done we've done practice. We had regular season games. We had some home games. 100%. This is the championship game. This is the championship. Thanksgiving and Christmas are the two championships. Especially Thanksgiving is like, all right, look, if I if I commit to making a dish. I'm coming in with, I'm going to commit to something that I know I can execute well. Yeah, Some people absolutely. will be like, um, they just be like, I'll try this new recipe. I said, we tried new recipes on Thanksgiving. <laughs> it might come out good, but what if it doesn't? And we have to all experience this together now. Well, so. especially if you're responsible for a staple dish. Now you can try out new recipes if it's kind of like, additional or supplementary or the dessert to try out when it's yeah. five or six absolutely the mac and sure. cheese there has to be there has to be someone who is responsible tried and true that's done the mac and cheese and then you can do the experimentation yes in addition to yeah the ancestors need to certify you too somebody of our our grandmother's yeah, generation yeah, said you can't, said, just, you can't yeah, volunteer we can make, to do we can make yeah. we can volunteer but it needs to go through a secondary level of yeah. verification <laughs> oh yeah yeah we can make the mac and cheese yeah that's fine or they ask you when you reach a certain level it's like oh my well, can you bring and say my my queen i can bring what my grandmother when that's i'm home when i'm home when you've been tasked with the mac and cheese, I actually did the mac and cheese for, that was one of the dishes I did um, yesterday for Thanksgiving for my family. Girl, um, yes. And I was like, y'all want, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, because okay. It, it, it's also funny because people forget that I cook as well. I, sometimes I forget that I cook as well because I my business focuses primarily on pastries and cocktails. Um, and so a lot of my friends, whenever I'm talking about cooking actual dishes um mm -hmm. they're like you cook I'm like yeah yeah I actually do cook <laughs> that's how I got into baking but <laughs> it's like baking is kind of a type as cooking and baking is definitely different but they're like they're sister cousins like it's not act like totally different yeah yeah um yeah I I don't make see I'm a little bit gun shy about my mac and cheese like I don't have a steady recipe that I've gone to and it's like gone back to the well. I had one that I did that turned out well. I don't know. Sometimes these ratios in the cheese and the cheese sauce is in an area where it become, I remember not this Thanksgiving, but last Thanksgiving, because it was just me and Christian. I was like, okay, I'll make mac and cheese. And I followed this recipe because I'm I started a recipe because my gifting is not just free flying in the kitchen. Start with the recipe, alter it as you see fit. I got in there and I got the ratios of cheese and to make a cheese sauce. And thank God I had extra noodles because I got to the like, mix it all together. And I was like, this is, this is mac and cheese soup. This is not enough noodle. This is not enough noodle. This is like soup. It was creamy and good, but it was not thick enough. Yeah. The noodle so, to cheese sauce ratio. I was like, I don't, 
I don't know if they meant a whole, like, did I put too, I don't know, but I had some more. So I was like, sat what I had to get to the side, pulled out some more noodles, made some more noodles in there, then added, I was like, okay, this is now okay. mac and cheese level that I could appreciate. It was, it was too, it was soup. I was like, I don't. I followed, I was like, I checked, I was like, I followed all the ra- ratios. Maybe this is for the gifting of people that like mac and cheese soup. But I was like, I just, You're more like, noodles. No, not me. I, <sighs> not, I, I like some mac with my cheese. Mac <laughs> and the cheese. Not just cheese. Like they had the mac. Not, yeah. not like, it's not mac. No, it's not cheese and mac. It's mac and cheese. They're even. They're on the same yeah. playing field. They yeah, should nice be like about the same ratio. balance ratio. So. Yeah, I try not to do the staples. I try and like to do something too different because people have a certain way they envision how their mac and cheese is. And it depends on how you grew up, what kind of noodle you like, how much cheese you like. Do you like a little crust on top? Do you like it to be kind of burnt? Yeah. So I'm like- And I'm sure to- there's also additional nuance because I've, I've actually spent Thanksgiving in New Orleans a few times, which is where you're from. And yep. there are so many different ways that people make mac and cheese just in New Orleans alone. Yep. So. Yeah, we yeah. A lot of times they use more of a it's like a thicker spaghetti noodle. It's yeah, not a spaghetti. It's not that, an angel yeah. hair. And I I like that. I like I'm more of the traditional me make the, with the elbow macaroni. Um, because I think because my mom's from the Midwest originally, like her mom was from the Midwest. So we do more Midwest style, but like elbow macaroni. But I like the cheesy thickness. Yeah, Nicole made mac and cheese, and it was like a cheese sauce. Lots of gouda and stuff. I think yeah. So there's so much var- variety. Um, I think as long as you keep uh, vegetables out of my mac and cheese, um, unless we're going to call it a casserole, um, I'm good. Yeah, Just about I don't, anything I don't else. Need onions and and bell pepper in in the mac and cheese. That's 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 a casserole. We've changed it. That's not what we asked for. We asked for a ca- mac and cheese. <laughs> um, I let you have onions to make like the cheese sauce, like a little bit of diced onions, maybe like, but they need to yeah, disappear. Yeah. So when you're making, actually, the way that I make mac and cheese, when I'm doing my roux, I actually add in crushed garlic to the roux. Yeah. 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 So yep. it incorporates the flavor, but it's not large pieces. And you can do something very similar with shallot or onion, et cetera. Yep. As you're making. I'll let you have that. Yep. You're making that cheese sauce room. Yep. Sure. But if I see a carrot or a broccoli or a Brussels sprout, we're going to fight. Not a Brussels sprout. Girl, I saw <laughs> the, the internet just leads people wrong. Yeah. And I just I, was I've like, seen, it's a I've casserole at that seen, point. You're making yeah. a casserole. That's fine. Casseroles are fine. But we didn't, we didn't ask for that. I saw somebody put grapes in. I said, we don't, we didn't ask for that. We asked for mac and cheese. That's when you mac. have to just leave Pinterest. You're like, okay, I need a break from Pinterest. I need you to go Pinterest. verify with the ancestors. At some and if point, you, I if, wonder when I see pictures and videos of people doing stuff like that, at what point are you just doing this for the sake of contention? Um, this so is what I thought about. I was like, this viral. is just, yeah, this is trolling. You're trolling You're people trolling to us. get a reaction. You want people to be directed to. Well, there's no way. If I show up at, this is an, a public service announcement to all the Victory Podcast listeners. If I show up at your cookout or your gathering of any kind, and someone has made mac and cheese that contains anything besides a macaroni type noodle, a noodle and a cheese consistency, we gonna fight. We, I will throw it away to save everyone else. Yes, ever. Like yes. it just, nope, you cannot. Nope, not allowed. Sorry, not sorry. I will not eat it. And if you give me guff about it, I will tell you exactly why. And I'm a very direct feedback giver. Um, we'll talk about the mac and cheese. It's not about people you. You need, you need direct feedback. It's not about you. I'm not gonna talk about you as a person. I'm gonna say this mac and cheese is trash. And the reason it's trash is because it is not mac and cheese. You've made a casserole or you're, I don't understand what happened, but what we have here is a failure to communicate of what we asked. And that's, that may be on the host part, but I'm just here to set you right and uh, <laughs> help you, help you, help me help you. Um, what is it? We, well, what do we need to do? We do a little homework, do a little tests, something, but yeah, I like those recipes. I'm down for it. Um, eat all the things. Bread pudding is another popular Christmas time dessert um, in New Orleans, at least. Okay. I do enjoy a good bread pudding. Um, I, I've made a few 
um, iterate. One thing I will say about bread pudding is it's a nice uh, facilitator for a lot of different flavors. Like you can flavor it any type of way. So mm-hmm. there was one time I did a, a cinnamon cardamom bread mm-hmm. pudding, um, and I topped it with a cardamom caramel sauce. Mm, um, okay. One of my friends was doing. Um, her family is from Ethiopian descent, and she was doing an Ethiopian themed dinner for us Mm -hmm. Um, she had a sponsorship from a honey wine which um, for anybody that's familiar with Ethiopian cuisine honey wine is a very popular wine in that um, cuisine so she had a sponsorship she was um, shooting content so she decided to do kind of a mini dinner party Um, so to accompany the flavors in her um, dinner party I did this uh, bread pudding which Mm -hmm. I thoroughly enjoyed but yes I think that um bread pudding has a very special place in the sense that it's a custard based dessert so anything custard you know when we think custard most people think ice cream but you know you have creme brulee you have flan you have bread pudding all of these are custard based desserts and custard just carries flavor so so well and you can just do whatever it is that you want with it Mm -hmm. yeah people can mess it up I've um I've had the misfortune to uh, have some bread pudding in a place in Washington, D.C. that I shall not name, but uh, <laughs> it was, uh, I got excited. It was like, okay, they got bread pudding on the menu. My mind was like, woo wee. It came. I was like, I don't know what this is. I have paid for it and I do not like it. I had so one. I gave it a when chance. When you look forward yeah. to something and then you're disappointed at it. It was it was a great disappointment. Like there's there's a whole host of different bread puddings, consistencies, styles, flavors, all the things. So I did give it a try and was like, well, maybe I'm just you know not. I was like, it is beyond underwhelming. I had the one bite just to say that I tried it and I left it on the plate and it there it lied and someone maybe enjoyed it after me, but I did not like it at all. I just so disappointing. (laughs) It was yeah, it was one of those like the rest of the meal. It was a diner type place. I probably should have known, like, it's not, I'm not I shouldn't expect, but I was like, I don't want to judge. I wanna, I wanna eat uh, you have bread pudding, you put it on the menu. Somebody liked it. Somebody must like it. It's still on the menu. I was like, it was not for me. I do not. (laughs) Someone else will like it. It will not be me again. We'll get it what not does not measure up to my expectations no and maybe my expectations are too high because my grandma makes a killer bread pudding like bread pudding is like the game at home like it is it's in the repertoire of like new orleans i think of new orleansy things there's a white there's a place oh what's that redfish grill to the people making their list of foods when they go to new orleans it's the only restaurant on bourbon that i'll tell anybody to go to because it's just off of bourbon the beginning of bourbon street redfish grill they have a white chocolate bread pudding. Thank me now. Thank your ancestors now. It's it's one of the best like professional restaurant bread puddings, I think, okay. in the city. I, I have to add that to my list. I'm always looking for, I've spent a lot of time in New Orleans. As you know, I've mm-hmm. been there for Easter <laughs> and mm-hmm. various things with your family. So I'm always looking for new places to try every time I'm I'm there. So adding that to my yeah. list. Yeah, that's one of those, you know it's good because you have to like order it like you like it takes them 30 minutes. Like it's like you order it. And okay, they make so they it, make it, it comes out. Love that. Yeah, it comes out in a little a little pan and then they come with the white chocolate sauce thing, the bread pudding sauce on it, and it just goes mm, down the sides. Mm. It's so good. It's my favorite bread pudding in the city. That isn't like my grandmother's. Something. It's definitely different than my grandmother's, but it's it's really good. It's really good. So, oh, now I'm hungry again. Um, so I've linked a couple of things. I linked the Ghirardelli peppermint bark chocolate for folks. Um, we'll have to talk offline if if we know the that honey wine sponsor that your friend had or her content. We'll share that. Love to love to share things. So Southern comforts things cocktails though. Um, People don't always think about, at least I don't always think about cocktails for, especially I think Christmas, New Year's is a little bit more cocktaily. Mm-hmm. Um, 
what are some, I know like a go-to beverage that isn't really a cocktail, but you can cocktail it up, um, is we make eggnog at home. Okay. Um, and we yeah. make it from, from scratch and we serve it hot. Okay. Oh, interesting. You guys serve it hot. Okay. So my family actually has a, a, a family recipe for eggnog as well. Um, and we serve it chilled, but there's always a lot of bur- we actually put bourbon and rum in ours. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's potent. <laughs> um, and then there's always like a, a virgin non-alcoholic, um, iteration for the kids and, and things. Yeah. So every yeah, year. Ours, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say every year folks get together a couple days before Christmas because it's, um, it's on my, the extended side. Um, so my grandma's siblings, which my grandma mm. was one of nine. So really large family. Um, so we get together kind of that side of the family several days before Christmas, because Christmas is more so reserved for, you know, immediate nuclear family celebration. So. Absolutely. That sounds good. I know I, we do have a family recipe that has been, at least passed down from my grand grandmother to my grandmother. It's finally been written down because it'd be like, Oh, just to, you know, let the spirits talk to you of this and this amount of that. And you're like, I, somebody has got to write this. And she, her portion that she makes because she's got these pots that I've never seen these size pots anywhere in any store. Um, I'm hoping to one day when my grandmother goes on to be with heaven, that I get to inherit set pots because they're so massive. Um, but yeah, it's, it's basically someone, as I was describing the recipe said, it's basically like you're making ice cream was what I'm hearing. Um, it's like evaporated milk. Um, and then one and a half times that of water, you slowly heat that and then you split the yolks and the whites. Um, the yolks get several cups, some cups of sugar and kind of make a situation there. And then you add that to the evaporated milk and slowly, you know, warm, thicken that up. And then you take the whites and you make like a meringue um yep. with the egg whites and so there's stiff peaks and it goes on top with nutmeg pretty similar um, yeah it's bomb um, it, out the the whites and the yolks um mm-hmm. instead of evaporated milk we do heavy cream which also okay. gets whipped um so you form like a whipped cream and then okay. you combine all three elements together yeah but I, I love it. I don't like, this is goes back to like the mint extract. I don't like eggnog flavored things. When you go to like a restaurant and get an egg, or like a, like a fast food place might have an eggnog uh, milkshake or something. I don't like those. One, they're cold. I'm used to having it hot. And we usually basically make it virgin and then people can add um, bourbon to it. I think the bourbon takes away from the flavor of it personally. Um, but if you're in the, for the cocktail piece, but yeah, it's one of those. I'm lactose sensitive. Those are the sacrifices. I, it's like that's a double lactate. I'm gonna enjoy <laughs> all the amounts and big cups. It's always like a big, like big gulp size cup that we make because it's it's a massive amount. It's a big pot of eggnog that she makes. The full portion. Now, I my my uh, engineering aunt has taken and like okay, this is the half recipe. This is the quarter recipe so that you can like figure out your ratio. Oh, and there's also sweet and condensed milk that goes in there as well. Um, so lots of sugar. If you got the sugars and the diabetes, you probably shouldn't enjoy this beverage, um, without talking to your doctor first, but it is amazing. And we serve it hot. It's more like hot white chocolate, basically with nutmeg and cinnamon. I think those are the main seasonings. Okay. It's bomb. I love it. But again, this goes back to, I love homemade eggnog. Probably your, your recipe sounds good too. Um, but yeah, eggnog flavored things just, it's not, it's not yeah, it. Something about the artificial flavorings just don't quite check the box. Um, yeah. If you've had the real thing, I feel like it doesn't, sure. it's not the same. <sighs> um, but yeah, along the lines of cocktails, um, you know, definitely bourbon forward, again, getting into spices. Um, so cinnamon, allspice, nutmeg, et cetera, always pair very well with bourbon because when you think about the barrel aging process of bourbon, um, you know, the it's those charred pieces of the wood barrel 
that kind of add to the flavoring. And so um, from a, you know, not to get too technical, but from a chemical composition perspective, they're very similar um, to chemical compounds in those spices. So that's the reason why they just kind of pair so well together. And also um, for me, again, it just adds to kind of that warmth that I think a lot of people are looking for during the holiday times. One, depending on where you're physically located, it's cold outside. And two, you know, just the the warm, tingly, um, communal feeling that you get when you're around friends and loved ones, um, you know, going into these holiday seasons. Um, I'm really big on large batch um, cocktails for the holidays. Um, so, you know, I have a few different go-to punches. I love a good champagne punch. I'll do several different variations of that. Um, I, have a, <clears throat> I have a winter sangria a recipe that I do that incorporates both cinnamon, star anise, and cranberry, which is a really good flavor um, specifically for, uh, you know, winter holiday season. So going into Christmas, um, let's see. Um, yeah, I, I mean, you know, anything large batch, um, anything that uses apple flavoring, cranberry, um, you know, red wine notes, um, your cinnamon, your nutmeg, your star anise, um, those are all going to be really good pairings for the food that you're going to be serving during the holiday times. Um, and it's also, again, going to invoke that spirit that you're looking for um, and the feeling that you're, you're trying to get in terms of bringing people together and, and serving just really, really good uh, dishes to them during this time. Absolutely. Uh, just again, getting more hungry. The, my future sister-in-law, uh, it had to be a couple Christmases ago. Uh, shout out to China. Uh, she, she made an amazing, I think it was, it was like a, I think probably more like this winter warm sangria vibes, but it definitely had like wine and like star anise and like some orange in there. It was, it was bomb. It was really good. That sounds really good. It was amazing. Um, but yeah, I love it. Warm. Yeah. We want to, even if it's, you know, New Orleans doesn't often get real, real cold, like snow, Chicago cold, but oh, you know, you're, yeah, to your point, you're, you're home, you're with family. This is the time to, you know, we, you should, you know, try and eat healthy all the rest of the year, but indulgence around the holidays, yeah, you know, a beverage and, this is, where, this is your time and then you know everyone's new year new body new you then you know you can turn the page after that but we don't go cry crazy but a little indulgence is good so cocktails and all the things on that note with these lovely things that you mentioned i know that the listeners don't know but i know we uh here you got a, a simple syrup coming out I do. Tell the people about it. Yes, We're absolutely. so excited. So, Tell everybody. I know. I'm really excited. Um, so as I mentioned um, earlier in our conversation, getting into the product space. So the first product that I will be releasing is a simple syrup um, called Warm Winter. Um, so again, invoking uh, that same uh, kind of feeling but flavor profile when you think about winter and holidays and and items that pair very well together. Um, so the flavor profile of warm winter simple syrup is honey, cinnamon, allspice, and vanilla. Um, so again, um, those very fragrant notes, um, those very spice forward notes, um, but then you get that balance of honey in there to just kind of mellow everything out and to help it blend well together. So really excited about this. Um, for the past couple of years, since I've been in the mixology cocktail space, I've been releasing and providing different recipes for simple syrups to, to people. So now is my opportunity to um, bottle up uh, one of those and and make it uh, ready for use um, for all of the people out there. So I'm so, so excited about this. We're so excited. The podcast is so excited. Oh, 
That sounds good. I wrote notes of what the flavors are. So that comes out tomorrow. And where can people, they're listening to you and all your fun culinary awesome insights and flavors. So surely they know already in advance that the warm winter simple syrup is going to be amazing. So where can they get it? How fast can they get it? All the things. Yes. So warm winter will be available at um, my website, uh, thepastryengineer.com starting um starting tomorrow, Saturday. So probably by the time folks are listening to this podcast, it'll already be available. Um, so if you go to thepastryengineer.com, um, go to, um, they'll, there'll be a pop-up uh, that you'll see, but you can also navigate to the menu and go to the shop section and you'll see it listed there. Um, I'll have it available for shipping as well as if you are in the Chicagoland area or the Atlanta area, I will have local pickup locations for it. Um, keep in mind, this is a limited release. So I highly advise you to go order your bottle as soon as you decide that you want one because they will not be available for a long time. Um, so just, yeah, uh, just go to the website. You can you can get it from there, and we'll we'll ship it to you. Or if you're local to Chicago or Atlanta, you can come pick it up. Oh my God, I'm gonna be on the website ASAP. I will get at least one. I might get two. No shade, but shade. I'm definitely gonna support. We have to support, you know, people that are doing great work people that are of color that are doing great work. And I'm on a team like support black women, black businesses, um, keeping the money in our communities when we can and wouldn't, and this is my big pet peeve. If you're supporting a black business as a black person, please stop trying to ask for discounts um, or hookup prices. Um, Cause you don't go to Walmart, you don't go to Target, you don't go to Amazon and try and expect to pay anything different than what the list price is, unless you have a, happen to have a coupon or whatever. But let's let's make sure we're supporting small businesses in general, right? Like they, especially post pandemic, those who have made it through, altered their business, like you have, um, to to expand it in a way to to endure is to support local, support support people, support you know not faceless companies. Not that you can't I, look. I shop at Amazon. I'm gonna be honest, but you know when you have the opportunity to support someone. Um, who's as fantastic as Gia is and as um, thoughtful in her food and her choices. And you also have on that shop um, your cocktail engineering ebook for folks. Um, yes. So that's also a good one that, that I've purchased and used. So awesome. So excited. I put the website in the show notes. So if you're listening to this, hopefully it's not sold out by the time you listen to this. Um, but please check it out. I know, I already know in advance, I'm, I'm going to be on there tomorrow, um, ASAP to make sure that I get mine. Um, but absolutely. So thank you so much, Kia, for coming on and talking about all the great yummy things. Um, we love having you on the podcast to talk about anything, food, pastry, yum, tastical, and anything else you want to talk about. Cause you're a friend of the pod. Uh, so we loved having you. Any final notes for folks, social media, any of that upcoming other events or things you want to share? Um, yeah, just, uh, you know, uh, again, we talked about the simple syrup. Um, my ebook is also available on the website as well. Um, social media, if you're interested in following me on Instagram, I'm at the pastry engineer. I'm also at Kia Binion, um, which you'll find a little bit more of the cocktail related content um, on my personal business Instagram page. Um, I, I, um, I won't go into too much detail, but uh, I do have an upcoming feature um, in a magazine for my alma mater's alumni mag. Um, so really excited about that. Um, it's going to be a part of the food and beverage um, magazine edition. So really, really excited for this feature. Um, I, I think it'll be for any GT alum, Georgia Tech alum who are listening out there. Um, I think the edition will come out in December. So in the next couple weeks or so. So 
super, super excited about that. So if you get a copy, um, please be sure to, to, to read on my feature. Um, and yeah, those are kind of some of the big things that I have going on to close out the end of the year. Um, you know, very much looking forward to 2022 and continuing to expand in the ways that I've pivoted um, during the pandemic. Um, there's been a lot of opportunity uh, for me, especially in the virtual corporate team building space. Um, I, you know, I've, I've done a couple of holiday team building events already uh, for various corporations. And so just, again, really excited for everything that's to come. Yay, we are so, we are proud of you, said we are proud of you. I'm doing the whole proud of you cheerleader <laughs> dance for the like thank one year I was a cheerleader. And, and as always, thank you again for having me back. Um, I always enjoy these conversations and being a guest of Victory Podcast. It's always just a, a fun and dynamic conversation that we get to have. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you for coming. Thank you and, uh, for listening to this. Get the simple syrup, get the cocktail book, follow the social media, do all the things. You will not be disappointed. Thea has great content, great food. I'm already hungry. I have to figure out something I'm going to eat at home because now I think leftover warm up is about to be because now I'm thinking about all the things. So thank you so much for joining and thanks for listening um, and have a great rest of your day, weekend, holiday season. Oh my God. Thank you so much, Kia, for joining us. Thank you all for listening to this episode. Um, if you haven't, go ahead and mark your calendars for that warm winter simple syrup that's coming out by the pastry engineer, uh, the pastryengineer.com. Check out the show notes. I've linked pretty much everything we talked about today. Um, of course, if you like this episode, please take a second, like, subscribe, share. The more you share, the more people can get to learn all the great information, great lessons, great tips that we share here on the Victory Podcast. As always, uh, I'll end this episode as I end every episode. Every problem has a solution. It's whether you're willing to do the work to find it. Let's do the work and be victorious.